hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well i have missed you so so much honestly i've been away for a week even though my videos have been going out i just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has still been here still watching my videos and still chatting in the live chats despite the fact that i've not been there but also thank you so so much for all of your messages all of your love it really has meant so so much it was a tough tough week in Ireland we did lose our uncle and yeah it was it's been very very sad very very tragic and yeah so thank you massively for all of your messages of support and love and I've appreciated reading them so so much I haven't yet managed to read all of the comments from all of the videos that went out while I was away but this video guys this is my final Chinese New Year upload it's a big one it's a fun one and yeah let's get into it we are making a mold so it is the year of the rabbit in 2023 let me know what year you were born in i was born in the year of the snake i'm not altogether happy about that it sounds a little bit i don't know a little bit mean <laughs> anyway i decided early on in my chinese new year videos that i really wanted to try and mold this this is a basic ceramic rabbit from poundland i've had it a couple years and I figured you know what let's have a go I'm gonna be using silicon rubber from let's resin now I am a let's resin silicon ambassador so all of the details for your silicon rubber will be in the description box below and I figured we just have to have a go you know we have to have a play now here's the thing I do have two sets of the silicon um, mold housing the silicon mold making housing from let's resin I have two sets. This is gonna allow me to make molds of things that are extra tall. However, two sets together were not tall enough for the rabbit. So we have to go from scratch. We have to make our very own mold and we are using some foam board. Now, this is foam board I've used in previous videos back in the early days when I very first started making a mold you will need a craft blade and a metal ruler and just I guess a ruler to measure out your dimensions you want to make sure that the mold you are using is going to be tall enough wide enough you know height depth width all of that enough for the piece that you are molding the first thing I did was just kind of eyeballed it if I'm honest I laid my rabbit down against the foam board and I just wanted to create a line that was a couple of centimeters away from the very top of the rabbit this is going to give me the height that I need to make sure that the mold is the mold housing is going to be big enough for the rabbit but of course depending on what you are molding you will just you know adjust your measurements accordingly now I have to say this is I think think this is the biggest thing that I've ever molded on my channel now with this foam board all you have to do is score it with your blade and snap it it snaps real easily and then you just want to go in on the other side with your blade and cut down that fold now this foam board does have a cellophane protective sheet over it and I have to let you know right now I actually um, got this foam board idea from Resinace however I do think I've bought the wrong one I've used this before and it's very very plasticky it's almost like the whole entire thing is plastic however this one felt a lot softer it broke a lot easier so I think I've ordered the wrong one however it still did the job so I've cut my four pieces they are all exactly the same height however I've got two longer lengths for the sides and two shorters for the ends because the rabbit is longer and it's not that fat you just have to work out what it is you need now my rabbit is a hollow ceramic form and that makes me nervous I don't want silicon seeping underneath I don't want my rabbit to float we all know what happened when I tried to mold hollow things they literally floated to the surface so I am filling my rabbit up with some garden decorative stones now you can use rice you can use sand you can use anything you want to fill up your rabbit you can use tape to cover the hole you can use cork anything honestly whatever works for you you do what works for you. This is what was working for me and I decided to go with it. I was also really nervous that if I used sand, it might just fall out everywhere on D-Mold and 
I don't know, I figured the garden stones would add the weight that I need, but also, if the tape was to come off, like, it wouldn't really make too much of a mess, like sand or rice. <laughs> so yeah, this worked perfectly, and I can tell you this was a huge success. The tape did not budge. Actually, this green frog tape created the most amazing seal. I don't think I could have done it any other way. And it definitely created the weightiest rabbit possible. The next thing you're going to do is build up your walls around your form. I am actually using one of the foam boards as a base. So I'm not sticking the rabbit down. The rabbit, the weight of the rabbit is going to do all the work for me. And that is all. So create your walls and make sure that you double check that your rabbit your item still fits within your mold form as you build it up. I'm using hot glue here to glue along the base of each of the foam board pieces, but also where those foam board pieces join in the corners, I'm using hot glue to bring it up along the side. Now you may notice here, <laughs> I did have to cut another wall for the end because what I'd done, I'd cut my walls exactly. You don't want to do that. You want them to kind of overlap in some way. Definitely check out Resinace's videos if you want more clarity on that. But you want them to overlap like you see they are here at the top. They're overlapping. This gives you more sturdiness and more security and it allows you to really pack the hot glue in there. So I went around all four edges, the bases and up the sides with the hot glue twice. <laughs> like I went overboard on the hot glue. I was too nervous to just put one layer, so I used about four sticks of glue because it's a huge, deep, dense mold. And I was so scared that as soon as I started pouring the silicon, it would just pour out of every little teeny tiny crevice that I'd created. Luckily, we were okay because I went overboard with the glue. Into the silicon, I have added in some gold mica powder, but also some of the gold floating pigment powder from Just For You Online. I figured it's Chinese New Year, I might as well make it gold. I didn't really want to make a red mold, plus can't really get any decent red mica powders. If anyone knows of a decent red mica powder, do let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to let me know what year you were born in according to the Chinese New Year Zodiac. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Okay, to pour the silicon after mixing for five minutes, to pour it, we are gonna pour it from real high up. This is gonna naturally pop bubbles, eliminate bubbles, and it really does help. So I am holding my jug of silicon around two feet off the desk, right, real high, like real high. And I did have to mix up extra. You saw there that I had an entire jug full. It was not enough. I had to mix up another, say, 200 grams just to fill this mold. It was at this point I remembered I've got so much leftover silicon from previous fails. I could have just shoved it in there, saved me some silicon. But never mind. We live and learn. It's there. I need to make it so that it's more in front of my face. Now, getting this foam board off wasn't hard. However, it was long, like it started to rip and I'd not experienced that with the previous foam board. It was literally coming off in chunks. And it was at this moment I realized I must have ordered the softer version because I'm pretty sure the first version I used was solid, quite solid plastic. It is what it is, I'm afraid. I do have a little bit of the foam board wasted. Now, I've sped this section up for you because let me tell you something. I could not get this rabbit out. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. I was so excited to do this. I've been waiting weeks to do this. And would it come out? No, it would not. I got my alcohol spray. I thought, you know, the silicon doesn't know that it's ceramic. Maybe it will know that it's resin and it will just pop out like everything else does. But it was not budging. It was not a budging. So I wanted to leave this in for you so you could see that the struggle was real. But oh no, we do not give up. I decided I'm going to cut my mold. Now, I have seen people do this. This petrifies me. 
petrifies me. I was so intimidated to do this because once you cut it, there's no going back. Now, people do this all the time. I've just never done it. I've never had to do it, never tried it. Oh boy, I was nervous. So I just got my craft blade and I tried my best to get the neatest cut possible. And honestly, it felt like <laughs> it felt like birthing a baby, like their head was pure stuck. It was the head that it was stuck on. And I don't mean that it was fused, like the head comes out in the end, but yeah, it was that area that I was really struggling to pop out of the silicon. And again, I'm leaving this all in for you because I want you to see the reality of this project. I don't want to just pop it out and say, wow, look at that. How easy was that? No, it was fiddly. It was so, so fiddly. So I went back in with my craft blade and I cut just a little bit more. I was trying real hard not to cut too, too far down. I didn't want that slit to go all the way to the bottom of the mold because that just really would have put the mold in a compromising position. It would have jeopardized the stability, I think. So yeah, that did it. That did the job. It released the head, which released the ears. And honestly, at this point, I was so happy. I couldn't even see the cut. So when I held the mold firmly between both hands, that cut, that slice that I'd made in it, it practically disappeared. Now here's the scary thing, because now I have to fill it up and hope, hope, hope that the resin doesn't just seep straight out of that slit. Now, people that do cut their molds, I've seen them use um, rubber bands to hold their molds back together again when it's time to fill them up. Now, I don't have any rubber bands because why would I have rubber bands? And instead of ordering them, I decided to just go my own way and we'll hope that it works. And that's the story there. But for now, I'm going to add in some gold foil. This is the same gold foil that I've been using throughout my Chinese New Year videos. I decided to kind of wedge it down into the ears, into the ear cavities, some in the face, some on the body, not too much. I didn't want too much. I wanted to be able to see some clear resin in there as well. But yeah, wrapping it around your finger and shoving your finger down, it worked. It worked really, really well. So definitely a tip. Also, FYI, I had some leftover silicon. Come on, believe that. <laughs> I always have leftovers. I actually made a miniature silicon mold of all of my cogs and wheels and it came out great. Okay. I am using Vista resin in this project and I am using the ocean. It's designed for deep pores and I figured this would work perfectly. Now, if you saw a video, I want to say four, five, six months ago, I made the Let's Resin Crystal Towers. Oh my gosh, stunning. And I used this deep pore resin from Vista. So it's Vista Ocean. It worked perfectly for that. I figured it would work perfectly for this. Next up, we're gonna add in some red. Now, I was sitting there thinking, I wish I had red foil. I wish I had red foil. And then I remembered that in 2021, not Christmas just gone, the Christmas before, I actually saved a whole bunch of my Quality Street chocolate wrappers because one day I wanted to put them into resin. Haven't done it yet, but the bag was just sitting there and I thought, what if I just snip off, just trim off some gorgeous red pieces of this Quality Street chocolate wrapper and put it in. And then I've got my gold and my red, which I think is totally indicative of the cultural colors, the Chinese New Year colors. It screams Chinese New Year with the red and gold. And that is exactly what I did. Now, at this point, I don't know if the quality street wrappers are going to bleed, if any of that ink, any of the red is gonna bleed out because it is a deep pore resin. I don't know, I was thinking maybe it will get really hot and the red color will bleed out into my resin, but I decided to just go for it anyway because I've never done this before, might as well. Now, like I said, I don't have any rubber bands. So what I did was I wrapped my packing tape around the mold twice. 
Now, sellotape in itself won't stick to the silicon, but sellotape will stick to sellotape. So if you are trying this method, just make sure that you wrap the tape around your silicon mold enough so that it meets itself and sticks to itself. Hopefully that makes sense. And then it was time to pour. I'm loving all the crisp little red bits in with the gold foil. I think at this point I was so, so happy with the choices that I made. And of course I had some leftover resin. When will I grow up guys? <laughs> when will I actually adult and do my mixtures properly? But it's all good. We got some pretty things out of it and I will show you that afterwards. Okay, this is two days later. This was filmed the day before I left for Ireland, which is why my videos were all delayed and I didn't have an upload this week. Today is the day. So yeah, I just cut the tape away. Of course it comes away like a dream because tape and silicon, they just do not stick. And look at this, not a single drop guys, not a single drop of resin found that cut. Not a single drop. There was not a mark on the on the rabbit. There was not a single mark and I was so happy. I couldn't believe it. I fully expected there to be at least a line down the side of the rabbit, but nothing, nothing. Now here is where I kind of got the got to grips of how to demold this rabbit. Now, the trick is if you are doing something like this and there is like on my rabbit, there's a big head and there's two ears. That's where all the suction is. So that's the bit that you really need to pop out. Like I said earlier in the video, it's kind of like birthing the head of a baby. Once the head is out, <laughs> everything came out. I'm so sorry to use that as an example, but it's the only thing I could think of. Once the head came out, you can see I'm trying to lift it out from the bum, from the rabbit tail. It's not having it because the head and the ears are well and truly in there. But look, once the head is out, pop. And look at this. I love it. I love it so, so much. It came out so pretty. Honestly, I'm over the moon with the choices I made here with the gold foil and the red. We definitely have bubbles. Now, because this is a deep pour resin, that means it takes 48 hours to cure, like confidently. It could cure in 24, depending on how deep you're pouring it. But I demolded after 48 hours and yeah, there's bubbles. There's definitely bubbles. Now, the reason I think there's bubbles is two reasons. is because the head was down and under. So I think the bubbles got trapped in the chin like the cheeks and the chin area of the rabbit. But also I think the foil and the foil from the Quality Street Sweets added to that, kind of trapped them in there. A pressure pot would be ideal in this situation. If you had a pressure pot, then you wouldn't see a single bubble in your creation. However, I don't have one, but I fully am going to be getting one this year. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait because I think it's going to transform when you do resin castings like this and they're nice and deep and chunky. It will transform it and I won't get any bubbles. But what do you think? I hope you love it as much as I do. I honestly had plans for this. If I didn't have to leave when I had to leave, I was going to go on and make a solid red resin rabbit. I was kind of gonna make, I was hoping to make like a set of three. I thought they'd look really cute. But as it was, I had to down tools and leave for Ireland. So this is it. This is all we have. Look at that. Look at those bubbles. I was so sad about the bubbles. But you know, like I said, I had leftover resin. I made this pot. Oh my gosh, how crystal clear is this pot. I was so, so happy with this. I think it's beautiful and it works so well with the rabbit and you can never have too many pots. And then the last little bit of resin went into this miniature pyramid, which in itself is gorgeous, I think. But we are here for the rabbit, the year of the rabbit. I'm over the moon with how this turned out. I definitely think a pressure pot would make the results a little bit more wow. It's foggy in places, but it's ultra clear in others. And I just think it is so, so pretty and rich. So golden. And yeah, 
happy Chinese New Year. I hope you have enjoyed all of my Chinese New Year videos. Thank you so much again for all of your support. It has been incredible, especially over the last week and a half. All of your love has meant the world to me. I hope you found this helpful and I'm getting ahead of myself on the voiceover. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> the mould worked. <laughs> this is where I was going to tell you the mould worked really, really well. The cut worked well. Don't be scared by it. Don't be intimidated by it. Just make sure that your walls are thick enough to handle a cut because my walls here are really thick. They're around about one and a half centimetres. Make sure your walls are thick. Everything will be linked below and back to the outro. <laughs> Again, I appreciate you massively. I cannot wait to speak to you all tonight because um, I am actually recording this voiceover um, the morning. Oh no, today's Friday. Oh my gosh, guys, where's my head at? Today's Friday and I cannot wait to speak to you all tomorrow night in the live chat. Hopefully some of you will join me back in the live chat. Oh, it's been so long. I cannot wait to talk to you all. I literally have missed you all so, so much. But here it is, the golden rabbit for Chinese New Year of the rabbit. I hope you love it. I hope you feel inspired. And I will see you all in the next video, which will be Monday. Bye.